Hello everybody and welcome back to yet another addictive fishing tutorial. Today we're talking about a super simple method and a very effective method on how to catch trout in creeks, rivers, and streams and that's with using micro beads on a float and on a fly rod. So if you guys want to learn more about this technique, stay tuned. It's coming at you right now. why these micro beads work so good in any kind of creek, river, or stream is because of the, the capacity of fish in that river. Either fish are spawning or they're just looking for that natural presentation of an egg or some, some sort of sustenance for them floating down the river. These fish are, are living in certain areas of the river. They want to be able to feed and expend as little energy as possible. So fishing certain methods and fishing with these micro beads along in certain holes like you see behind us is going to be really effective and it's going to help you catch more fish. The two ways I like to use this method is either with a float setup, which I have here, a little micro float and an ultralight rod. What I have here is a, just an Okuma Salilo ultralight two to six pound rod. I have a RTX 30S reel on here. I have 15 pound braided line on here tied on with a fluorocarbon bumper. That fluorocarbon bumper is imperative for this little mustad float so that it can slide up and down my line and regulate my depth. That doesn't work so good on that braided line, but the braided line is very tough. It mends well on top of the surface of the water and it's very durable and it lasts a long time. The way I've connected this braided line to this fluorocarbon is with a double uni knot. And we have a bunch of tutorials on addicted fishing if you guys want to learn how to tie some more of those knots. But that's a unified knot between that fluorocarbon and that braided line. So getting that knot down, whether it be a blood knot, whether it be a double uni, getting that knot down and securely getting it tied is going to really make this method work a lot better and it's going to help you lose a lot less gear. So what I have on this line for my indicator for my float is just a fixed float. Now this has a line that runs through each of these rubber grommets and that slides up and down my line to adjust whichever depth that I want to be fishing in that particular run. Now next is the easiest part of this setup and why I like it so much because it's so simple and it's so effective in the way that you can change out your colors, change out your beads, and change out your profile very quickly and easily and also change your weights. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take just a really nice bead. You can see the different colors and beads I have here. Pretty good range. I have the pinks, I have the reds, I have the pales, and I have the orange. Having a good, a good variety of those beads and being able to change up quickly and show those fish a different color or a different size of bead throughout the drift, it can be very imperative at times and it can key in on those bites. But I don't like to use anything over about a 10 mil bead when I'm targeting these trout. So these ones here are six. These beads are eight and the bigger one right next to it is a 10 millimeter bead. So I don't like to go over that 10 millimeter bead. So what I'm gonna start with here today, I'm gonna go with a nice fuchsia pink. I'm gonna slide that up my line. Then I'm going to use a number four mustad hook here. I'm going to tie just a normal fisherman's knot to that. So my bead is still up my line. I don't have any weight connected yet. That's coming next. I'm going to do seven wraps. Go back through the eye that I created. And pull that thing tight. And there we have it. We have our hook. Be sure to cut your tag end into your tackle box. And what I'm going to do here to secure this bead to this line, you want this above the hook. You don't want that bead sitting on top of the hook because it can cover up the hook gap. So when that fish eats it, it can grab that and it starts to roll around and it can actually become unhooked very easily if that bead is sitting on top of that hook. So what I do here is a very simple bead knot. You can peg this with a toothpick. You can do a variety of different methods to do this, but I like to just do a double overhand over the hook, just do two loops over that shank of the hook, pull that thing down, slide that bead up your line a little bit, and then pull her tight. Because odds are, these smaller fish that we're going to be finding in these creeks and streams, maybe you have big fish in your location, but these smaller fish aren't going to be able to break that 8 to 10 to 12 pound fluorocarbon line, which you're going to adjust to depending on what size of fish you have in your local area. So this is a 10 pound fluorocarbon. I got my number four hook and I got my bead tied in just like this. Now the way I'm going to get this down is I'm going to leave myself about a foot and a half liter here. I'm going to take a number four split shot and I'm just going to pinch that right onto my line here. And these have little grooves in them so that when you do pinch it down with your Gerber pliers or whatever pliers you have, it connects to that line and it doesn't make that line brittle, it doesn't pinch it at all, and it doesn't fray that line to where it could become fatal in fighting on that fish and actually break. So I have that one split shot on there. I'm actually gonna add one more little guy there. One more number four, that way I know I'm getting down. This float setup works a little bit better with the extra weight contrary to the fly setup that I'm about to show you because you can adjust that weight and it's not going to be dragging on the bottom quite as much as it would with the fly setup. So there we have it everybody. We are ready to fish. We got our ultralight rod, we got our braided line connected with fluorocarbon under a fixed float. We got about a foot and a half and we can adjust that depth with that bobber. Again, that thing is in line so we can pull that up. If I'm fishing a four, five, six, seven foot deep hole, I can slide that up to that depth. I can drop my split shots down and be right in the strike zone. So there's our setup. Fixed float, two split shots on our line, 
about a foot and a half or so above that bead. Bead tied in with an overhand knot and a number four hook. So the other setup I have here is just a six weight fly rod. You can use any kind of three weight, four weight, five weight, six weight. The six weight's a little bit heavy, but we might find some big trout in this stream today. So I have my six weight fly rod. This is nine and a half feet long. Any maker model of fly rod will work for this. The nicer rods cast a little bit better and it can help you learn a little quicker. But I have a floating line all the way down to, again, a fluorocarbon bumper. But this bumper that I've tied onto my line, just with a simple overhand knot to that fly line, to that floating line, I have about six to seven feet of leader on here. And what I've done here, you can add a little inline fixed float to this or a thingamabobber or any kind of fly indicator, but I like to fish this method down and dirty on the bottom and actually drag it through the strike zone. So what I have here is the same setup we just showed you. I have two number four split shot, about a foot and a half overhand knot down to a different colored bead. Now this fly setup minus that indicator can be a really effective way to get down and deep in some of those holes and stay in front of those trout. Both methods work really good. This one's fished a little bit differently than this one. So let's hit the river and I'll show you how. So as I've walked up to this hole, the thing about trout and the beauty of trout is they can live in every nook and cranny of the river. So what we have behind us here is just a beautiful bobber run, something I'd really want to use this six float. The fly fishing setup is going to be really effective in that super fast, super heavy water where we're not going to be able to get down. Here we have a very nice walking speed. These trout can be sitting right in those bubble lines. The foam is home, as they say. Those trout can be sitting right in those feeding lanes, relaxed, easy, not expending too much energy and waiting for that food to come to them. So I put two split shots on here to begin. I'm actually going to take one of those off. I don't recommend using your teeth out there, everybody, or else you're going to have chipped teeth like me. And I'm going to use just that one split shot so that I don't get snagged up. So again, here's my setup. I'm gonna start shallow. I got my bobber sitting about three and a half, four feet. I know it's about you know four and a half to five feet deep out there. And I'm gonna start close. The method that you wanna always utilize is cast close and then to the middle and then far. You don't wanna cast over those fish that are right there at your feet to start your drift. And throw that out there. The key here is to keep your line up and off the water just enough to allow that bobber to get a nice natural flow. As you can see there, I was a little too deep so my bobber sucked under before I got a good drift. I'm gonna come down about six to 10 inches here. Now I'm fishing about a total of two feet. And here we go again. I'm gonna start with that inside cast. And we're gonna watch that bobber and let our line go straight with that. We don't wanna inflict that float at all. We want it to be floating as naturally with that current as it possibly can. And you can see I'm letting line off of this reel. My bail's open. I'm watching my float go down with the current and I'm lifting my rod tip four to five feet each time to give it that four to five feet of line so that it can naturally drift with the current. If you let it just pull that line off of that spool, you start to create resistance against that float and don't get a natural drift at the same speed as your current. Now that I made that first close cast, I'm gonna cast to the middle. I'm gonna cast about five to 10 feet further here. See, I went just to the side of that bubble line. I'm gonna let that thing start to work down through that zone. I know I'm fishing at an adequate depth because my bobber isn't laying sideways, it's not snagging, and it's floating again at that same speed. On this next cast, I may even add a little depth because I don't see that thing dragging bottom as much as I want it to. I want that split shot down. I want that bead right down on the bottom rolling around just like a natural egg. So you saw there, I went four to five inches deeper. This is gonna be my third cast. I know I'm casting into the deepest part of the hole. So I'm gonna add about three to four to five inches, about a bobber's length each time, and I'm gonna keep continuing to cast until my bobber starts to lay down river, which is gonna indicate that I'm touching the bottom. There he is, got him, got him. So you saw with that natural drift, by working my way out into the middle of the run with each cast, not starting too far across there, going a little bit deeper each time, I finally got that thing down in the zone and got this absolutely gorgeous cutthroat on my line. You see the importance of that number four hook so that it actually is, is not gonna do too much damage to these beautiful little trout. But there it is, you guys. First fish of the day, super easy method. We worked our way down in depth, we didn't start too deep, and we worked our way down into that strike zone and into the fish. Okay, so now that I've fished the top of that hole with about five to six casts, I worked my way all the way across, changed my depth. I'm gonna slowly move down on the hole. The key to this bead setup a lot of the time, you want a very, you want a good angle to set the hook. And I'm gonna explain that hook set here in just a second. But as we're gonna move down river, we don't wanna just let our bobber float all the way to the end of the run every time, because we're not gonna get an effective hook set on those fish. That's what I always say, close, middle, far, two steps down. Close, middle, far, two steps down. And fish with your feet, not your bobber. So we take about five, six steps down the river here. I'm gonna go back out. I'm guessing the depth should just about be the same. And I'm gonna start on that inside cast once again.
Second cast, I'm gonna go right into the middle, right into that foam line. And, the, and again, the key to this method and actually hooking the fish is when that float goes down, less is more with your hook set. You want that fish to be able to grab that bead, which isn't on the hook, turn and swim away and allow that hook to slowly hook into the side of their mouth or right into the top of their lips. And the key to that is to not set the hook too hard. When you rip that hook through their mouths and it goes too quickly, it hooks them in all sorts of random spots in their, in their face. Hooks them on the bottom of the jaw, on the top of the jaw, and what ends up happening is you're gonna lose those fish after a couple of head shakes. So keeping the right angle, not drifting your bobber too far down on the run, and setting the hook very lightly when you finally do get a bite is gonna be crucial in actually landing these fish. All right, so now that you guys have seen the effectiveness of that fixed float setup in this slower water, let's grab the fly rod, let's head down into some faster riffly water, some different trouty water, and show you how to fish that method that actually bounces along the bottom and can stay down in that strike zone. So what we've done is we've grabbed our fly rod. This method also works just as well on your actual spinning rod if you don't want to fly fish or you haven't got the opportunity to learn how. The same setup is gonna work just as well on that spinning setup, set up the exact same way. But we're gonna show you how to do it on the fly rod here, but the same thing rolls over into using a spinning rod here. So yeah. what we have in front of us here, big tree lane in the river, a nice current break where those fish can reside nice and easily. They don't have to be swimming too hard in the fast current. They can sit right back there in that feeding lane. Those eggs, all that bait, everything that they're eating is coming down that foam line, swirling in. So that's what we're gonna target first. We're gonna set down, cast up river behind that log and start to drift our stuff down the bottom right behind that structure. I just had one flash at it. So one of the biggest keys again, even with the fly rod, is starting close and then working your way far. The line management is what's gonna be crucial in this setup in this fast water. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go over my head, I'm gonna flop that thing over there, I'm gonna get it to go right down behind that structure, and I keep my tip high. And keeping my tip high is gonna keep me out of that sort of water current that I don't wanna be in. This fast water current is gonna rip me out of the strike zone. That slow stuff over there is gonna keep me in it. So I'm gonna keep my tip high, whether I'm using my spinning rod or my fly rod, keep my tip high and slowly fish it down through that zone. Okay, so the major difference you're gonna see in the difference in this switch up of techniques is that when I'm using this fly rod or I'm actually bottom bouncing with my spinning rod, I wanna pick something that's a little deeper and a little more swift. As you see, we moved out of that slow hole, we moved up river, we have a nice steady current coming in right at our feet, we have a nice little back eddy pool on the other side. And the way I'm gonna start my cast with this, again, whether it's with your spinning or it's with your fly, is I'm gonna start casting in a 45 degree up river. You don't wanna cast straight out or straight down because you're not gonna have time for that bead to actually sink down with that split shot. So I'm gonna start my cast at a 45 up river. Just a nice little poke. I'm gonna keep my tip high and I'm gonna wait to feel for bottom. And with this drift setup or with your bottom bouncing technique, you're gonna want to feel that bottom or else you're gonna need to add split shot or take it away. If you're instantly getting snagged, you're gonna take weight off. If you're getting through there nicely, feeling a tap every about five feet, you're fishing perfectly. So I can feel bottom just right down there. I'm gonna keep working my way out into the current, starting in close yet again. I'm gonna keep a high tip, wait to feel that bottom, and then wait to feel that fish. A lot of times when these things hit this bead, it's gonna be a really, really reactionary bite. They're gonna grab it and they're gonna swim back to where they were. So you're gonna feel that tug and you're gonna see your line actually shoot out. If you're using an indicator, like that fixed float we were using earlier, you're gonna see it shoot down in the current. So, I'm gonna keep working my way out, getting a few feet every time. Tip high, letting that drag. You can see my tips actually bouncing up and down every so often. That's making sure I'm down in the strike zone on the bottom. That's a steelhead, that's a steelhead going out with a big putty. Oh my god, that's a nice one. That's about the size of the one I caught when you guys were down river. Oh! Damn it, I wanted to get a picture of that. All right, so so far we haven't been able to find any luck really on this, on this drift fishing setup. So we've just been moving through, covering a lot of different water, hiked up river a little ways here, and came upon just an absolute little juice bucket here. Great spot for these fish to be living. A lot of overhanging brush, a lot of cover. I'm just gonna slide this bead through this structure. I can see there's a big boulder. See there's one, a big log in, in between me and that rock. I'm just gonna get some nice drifts on the inside, inside seam here. 
work it through and start working my way back out to the middle of the river. Man, that's fishing nice through there. Getting a nice slow drift, it's barely tapping bottom. Just down that strike zone the whole time I'm fishing through there. Going right on this inside here. It's just perfect. Oh, oh, there he is, there he is, there he is. That's a really nice one. Oh, you got me down around that tree. Here we go, here we go. Oh, that was awesome, the way that hit that thing so close to the bank. Look at that little guy. What a beautiful cutthroat trout, you guys. Look at that. Munching on beads. You can see these things are probably like post-spawn, so they're starting to get to that stage in their life cycle throughout the year where... Oh! Slippery fish. Better than keeping them on the bank too long, though. But those fish are seeming to get in that, that stage oh, of the no. year. Oh, Marlon's on. Oh, he oh. lost it. They're eating the worms today, too. So it seems they're getting in that stage where they're kind of coming off of spawn. It's late winter time out here. But this kind of goes for any time of the year. You can use this in summer, you can use it in the fall, you can use it in the winter time. Whenever these trout are gonna be spawning or whether there's salmon or something in the river that these fish are gonna be eating their eggs, these beads can be an absolutely deadly method as you guys saw here today. Well everybody, we hope that tutorial helped you learn a little bit more and maybe a new technique to go out and try to target these awesome trout that we have all over the world. If you guys wanna see more awesome videos just like this one that help you learn how to be better at fishing, go up here and click this link to this next video. Go down, hit subscribe, turn those notifications on, give us a thumbs up, and drop a comment below of what you thought of today's video and you could be the comment of the day, just like this guy right here. Thank you so much for tuning in guys. You stay fishy, we'll see you out there.